Welcome to life. Y'all, we are so excited that you have decided to join us today. But it's not just any regular day. You are just in time for our new series, Road Trippin'. Are y'all ready to go on a little adventure? I'm ready. So if you're new here, go ahead, drop your name and where you're tuning in from in the comments. We are in the comment box too, and we want to connect with you. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe because we don't want you to miss a thing, okay? If you're on Facebook, go ahead and share and let's get ready to worship. You. When my back was against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And I'm standing here Only because you made a way And we call you Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And we call you way make a miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 You are healer, indeed you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And we call you way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. That is who you are. And that is who you are.
Well, great day, family. Happy Sunday to you. I trust and pray that you are well, that your weekend was blessed, and that you're ready for an incredible week. Uh, I am excited to be here with you today, and uh, I'm honored that my brother, my friend, one of my best friends in the world, actually, uh, Pastor Alex Brown, has invited me uh, on this road trip with you. I want to invite you to California. That's right. We're road tripping today, and you have landed yourselves in Long Beach, California, where I am the, the founder of an amazing community called the Activate Nation Global Community, in which I'll give you more information about that later. But I want to say that Alex, Pastor Alex Brown, uh, has been one of the most consistent friends that I've had over the last few years. We met years ago uh, as we were both early on in ministry, and we have been building together, growing together encouraging one another and um, he has just been a blessing to my life so I want to celebrate you today Pastor Alex Brown and the whole Brown household household the whole Brown family I celebrate you all to this amazing ministry I want to say uh, I celebrate you as well I have been a fan of you all for years and so to have this opportunity to share with you today has just been it's been a blessing um, I want to invite you to, oh, let me introduce myself. My name is David Burris. I apologize. I'm so excited about this information. I'm going to get to you today. Uh, my name is David Burris. I am a native of the San Francisco Bay Area. I currently live in Long Beach, California uh, with my wife of 19 years, Miss Tanisha Burris. We have two sons, uh, Zion Burris, who just turned 18. Uh, in fact, we graduated him this week. And so we now have an 18 year old son who is a graduate of high school going into college. And we have a 15 year old son, Micah. And so uh, our hands are full, uh, but we are a blessed family and we're a grateful and thankful family. So I'm again, I'm honored and blessed that I get to serve you today. Today, we're going to be talking about when life requires a pivot. When life requires a pivot, if you have not already, I want you to grab something to write with, grab your journal, grab your notebook, grab your coffee, grab your tea, and let's have a conversation about when life requires a pivot. Let's pray. Father, help us today. Uh, send us a word that will change our lives. Help me to help your people. God, establish something in us today that is unshakable, unchangeable, unmovable. God, we want to be rooted in you today. So help us in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Well, listen, let's dive into our topic of today when life requires a pivot. There's a guy by the name of Jeff Goins who said, and I quote, pivoting isn't plan B. Pivoting is a part of the process. He said it again. He said it best. He said, pivoting isn't plan B. It is a part of the process. Sometimes we find ourselves having to pivot in life. And let me just give you this. If you live any longer than two minutes long, you will have to pivot in life. Life will require a pivot. And I want you to hear, understand, and even be encouraged in knowing that pivoting isn't plan B. Uh, you can be operating in the fullness of your capacity, fullness of your potential, and still have to pivot. And so life will require a pivot. In order for us to understand what that means, we have to really define what this word pivot means. So I want you to write this down. Pivot is the central point, pin, or shaft on which a mechanism turns. Pivot, it's the central point, pin, or shaft on which a mechanism turns. The word pivot means to turn on or as on a pivot. It means to turn on or as on a pivot. So the pivot really means to have a central point, a central, central location, and to make a turn or a shift. Again, all of us will be required to pivot. Now, that word pivot is the root of the word that we use called pivotal. That word pivotal means vitally important. So the word pivot is the root of the word pivotal, which means vitally important. Wherever there's a pivot required, something vitally important must shift. I want you to hear that. Whenever God is requiring you to pivot in your life, something vitally important must shift. In fact, what I submit to you is that if you do not shift in the pivot, you will miss opportunities, chances to live on a new level, operate on a new level, function on a new level. And so your pivot is vitally important. All right. Now, let me give you five indicators uh, that it may be time to pivot. Five indicators that are telling you rather that it may be time to pivot. All right. I'm going to share with you five indicators that are telling you that it may be time to pivot. All right. Write this down. Number one, uh, it may be time to pivot when things were once seamless and effortless and now they become a challenge. It may be time for you to pivot when things in your life at work, in your family, in your business, in your ministry, Things that were once seamless and effortless now become a challenge. And, and here's the thing. Nothing about you has changed. Uh, even nothing about the vision has changed. But when it feels like you're fighting against the vision, it may be time for you to pivot. All right. I'm sharing with you five indicators that it may be time to pivot. By the way, I'm going to give you some scripture in just a moment. I know you're probably saying, well, where is this dude going? Is, is, when is he going to give us some Bible? I'll give it to you in just a moment. All right. Uh, number one, um, it, it, it may be time to pivot when things that want, were once seamless and effortless now become a challenge for you to fulfill or accomplish. All right. Here's indicator number two, your vision, your mission, your assignment or your goals have changed. It may be time to pivot when you feel like that which you're called to your vision, your mission your assignment or even your goals have changed. You start waking up in the morning and realizing that there are some things that have shifted in your goals. Uh, your priorities have changed. What you value has changed. Uh, it may be time for you to pivot. Here's number three. I want you to write this down. You are no longer productive where you are. Um, productivity is often an indicator of purpose. And so sometimes your purpose shifts, your assignment shifts. Um, and one of the indicators that we know that we are to pivot is when we are no longer productive where we are, when in, in places and spaces where we used to be extraordinarily productive and those places and spaces are no longer points and uh, points of productivity for us. It may be time for you to shift. I want a uh, uh, shift or pivot. I want you to ask yourself, am I still productive where I am? I submit to you that even some of you on your job, 
uh, you realize that your season is up. It's time to pivot because you're no longer productive. Um, you're no longer, it's no longer seamless. The work hasn't changed. The workload hasn't changed. Yet, it seems like it's a push for you to get it done. You're no longer productive there. I'm sharing with you five indicators that it may be time for you to pivot. Here's indicator number four. Write this down. You have outgrown the culture of where you are. Right? That may be time. That may be your indicator that it's time for you to pivot. You have outgrown the culture of where you are. Uh, and primarily because your values don't fit in the culture that you're currently in anymore. Your values have shifted. Your, 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 your focus has shifted, right? And the culture around you has shifted. You can, you, can, uh, you can outgrow a culture and not even know it, all right? Have you ever been in a place or space and it feels like the very people that you used to be once close to and once you all had so much in common, the commonality has changed? Uh, you're no longer um, comfortable in that culture. And it's not like they're bad people. It's not they're like, like they're doing anything wrong, but you have changed. And let me just put this on the table for you real quick. This is just a side conversation. There are times when God will promote you privately. Let me say that again. There are times when you will be privately promoted. In other words, you will be promoted and not even know you're promoted. God won't tell you you're promoted, but things around you will start shifting. Your ideas will start shifting. Uh, what you expect, your requirements of people will start shifting. You have at times been privately promoted, even when your money isn't an indicator. Sometimes your money or your things, your house, your car, your clothing, uh, things that are tangible haven't shifted, yet you have been inwardly and privately promoted. And so you have to be very clear about where you are and very, very honest about your, your, your expectations. And as stated in number four, sometimes you will outgrow the culture of where you are. And that's an indicator that it's time for you to pivot. Let me give you this last one. I want to share this with you. Your creativity and or energy are elsewhere. You're not, uh, you're not as creative as you used to be. Your energy, your your energy for creativity is not where it used to be. That is an indicator in many cases that it's time for you to pivot. Now, we don't want to confuse that with laziness, slothfulness, or distraction. I'm not talking about being lazy. I'm not talking about being slothful. I'm not talking about being distracted. But what I'm talking about is where your creativity, where your energy, where your focus are no longer the same. That is an indicator that it may be time to pivot. Let me give you those five things again. Uh, number one, things were uh, that were once seamless and effortless now become a challenge for you to accomplish. Number two, your vision, mission, assignment, and even your goals have changed. It may be time to pivot if number three, you are no longer productive where you are. Number four, it may be time to pivot when you have outgrown the culture where you are. And number five, it may be time for you to pivot when your creativity and or energy are elsewhere, all right? Um, as you have heard those, I just want you to pause for a second. You can even pause this video and ask yourself, is God showing me something? Is it time for me to pivot? Have I outgrown where I am? I want to put this on the table. If you are in the same place you were five years ago, you are not growing. The objective of life is always to outgrow. You want to be outgrowing where you are. You want to outgrow who you are. You want to outgrow how you do life. And so it's important for us to be perpetually, constantly pivoting. Now, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 19, verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 9, and then we're going to spend some time kind of unpacking Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 9. I'm going to read the NIV, the New International Version you can read whatever version you have available to you, but let's make sure that we're all landing on Luke 19, verse 1 through 9. All right. Remember, our topic for the day is when life requires a pivot. When life requires a pivot. Let's read Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 9, and it reads, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy. Verse 3 says he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Hmm. 
So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore, tree, uh, sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. We're in verse five and it reads, when Jesus reached that spot or reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to the guest of a sinner. You know, tax collectors weren't, weren't looked on too highly back then. Verse eight, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord here, and now I have I, I, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. There's so much going on here and we're going to unpack it. Um, there are a few things that point to a life that, that requires a pivot. And so I want to illuminate some of those. I want to just kind of extract. There are five things I really want to want to extract from this text that will help us better understand what it means to pivot. All right. Uh, I've told you that life will require a pivot, but I want to show you what a pivot looks like in action. Let's read it. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. The first thing I want to highlight for you is found in verse number two. Zacchaeus, watch this. Zacchaeus, while he was, the Bible says he was rich. He was wealthy. But number one, I want you to write this down. Zacchaeus wasn't complacent. He wasn't complacent. We cannot become so comfortable and familiar that we miss the shift. You cannot, I cannot afford to, whether we're talking about in our marriage, in our relationship, in at work, in our ministry, in our business, in life. You cannot, I cannot afford to become so comfortable and familiar that we miss the shift. The Bible says here that Zacchaeus was wealthy. But how many of you know that wealth, money, isn't everything? Zacchaeus wanted more than just money. And I ask you today, I want to put this question on the table. What more do you want from God? What more do you want? Are you complacent? Are you stuck? Are you satisfied where you are? Or do you say, God, I want more of you? The first thing I want to point out when it comes to shifting in your life and pivoting in your life is that we cannot become so comfortable and familiar that we miss the shift. Zacchaeus was not at all complacent. I want you to hear that. Zacchaeus was not complacent. We cannot afford to be complacent if we're going to be all that God has required us to be. Number one, we find that in Luke, uh, in Luke 19, verse two, Zacchaeus wasn't complacent. I'm sharing with you five things that really point to Zacchaeus's pivot. I want to show you how he really captured and maximized the shift. Number one, he wasn't complacent. If we're going to get to where God wants us to be, we have to get out of, step away from, divorce ourselves from complacency. If you even think about Peter, when he was in the boat, and the Bible says that the boat was being tossed to and fro because the wind was contrary to the boat. The Bible says that Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on water. What Peter had to do was divorce the boat and marry the water. If you're going to ever walk on water, you're going to have to divorce comfort, d divorce complacency, divorce the thing that makes you most comfortable and convenient and step out on the thing that makes you uncomfortable. Here's, here's what I want you to hear today. It's time to get uncomfortable. It's time for you. It's time for me. It's time for us to get uncomfortable. We are too comfortable to be people of purpose. And so we have to step out of comfort. Number one, Zacchaeus was not complacent. Let's look at verse number three. And it says he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Heaven's sake, because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Second thing I want you to hear is that Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus. He was seeking Jesus. Um, whenever there is a pursuit of Christ, there will always be a shift of life. Let me say that again. 
wherever there is a pursuit of Christ, there will always be a shift required in your life. You cannot pursue Christ and remain where you are, that you cannot. And I'm not talking about geographically. I'm not talking about your home address. However, there will be times when even in your pursuit of Christ, God will require you to move physically, move, change addresses. But what I want to talk to more uh, is who you are as a person, your your character, your being, your values. You cannot pursue Christ and remain who you are. A pursuit of Christ will always require a shift. The Bible says that he wanted to see who Jesus was. He wanted to see who Jesus was. Whenever you say, God, I want to see more of you. I want to hear more of you. I want to be more clear. I want more of a relationship with you. That will always require you to shift. Whenever you say, God, I want to do more, I want to live more, I want to be more like you, I want to live out my purpose more, that will always require a shift. You cannot live the life God's called you to and not shift. I don't care how old you are when you're watching this. I don't care if you're eight or 80, life, as long as you have breath in your body, life will always require a shift. And especially if you are pursuing the things of God, let me, let me say this right quick. Um, think it not strange, even right now where you are, when your friends, your, your community, the people who you love the most, the people who you value the most, all of a sudden you don't feel comfortable around them. It's not that they've changed. It's not that you dislike them. It's not even that you've had a falling out, but something has shifted in you that makes you a little uneasy around them. That's because you have been privately promoted. And the more you pursue purpose, the more you will have to shift. Let me say this again. You cannot grow without also outgrowing. Let me, let me put that on the table. I need you to hear that. If you're ever going to grow in life, that means you're also going to outgrow, which means people, places, things, ideologies, concepts, even habits will no longer be comfortable and conducive to who you are. If you are ever going to grow, you will also have to outgrow, which means that you have to be willing to say goodbye to things that are not conducive to your next level. Let me share this quick story with you. I got about 10 to 15 more minutes. Uh, I was at home once. Uh, I was writing a book and my son wanted to spend some time with me. He was a young, young, young man at the time. Uh, this is my second son, uh, Micah. He had to be three years old at the time. And so Micah came in and he wanted to hang out with me. Uh, I was in our office at the house and I was typing and I said, I tell you what, go get your go get some toys. I'll turn on SpongeBob for you uh, and you can watch TV and hang out with me in here when I finish writing for the day. And so he went and got his stuff and he came in the room and I turned on the TV for him. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this kid. Uh, he is struggling to get on the couch and I didn't understand why. And when I looked over. Uh, I, I noticed that he couldn't get on the couch because he had his hands full of toys and he was trying to get on the couch and hold the toys at the same time and I had to give him a quick life lesson. And the lesson was this. And here's a lesson for you and I today as well. You, if you're ever going to get to your next level, you have to release the things that are not conducive to that next level in order to grab hold of where you're going. He couldn't grab the couch because his hands were full of toys. And so I had to tell him, put the toys down so you can grab hold of your next level. That's my word for you today. You, sometimes you have to put the toys down, put the friends down, put the, put the ideologies down so that you can grasp and grab hold of your next level. Sometimes the thing standing between you and your next level is what you're holding to on to on this level. Let me say that again. Sometimes the thing that's standing between you and your next level are the things that you're holding on to on this level. All right. So number one, Zacchaeus was not complacent. Number two, he was seeking Jesus. You cannot seek God. You cannot seek Jesus without also experiencing a pivot and a shift in your life. Here's number three. Uh, look at verse three. The Bible says that he wanted to see who Jesus was, but he, but he, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. I want you to imagine this short man who is wealthy, but short in this crowd, trying to see Jesus and everybody who's taller than him is surrounding him and he cannot see Jesus. And so in essence, all he is surrounded by and all he can see is butts. Hmm. Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus 
for the butts. That that should have caused something to leap inside of you because you and I, if we're not careful, we can let butts get in our way. Uh, but I'm too black, but I'm too short, but I'm too tall, but I'm a woman, but I don't have the money, but I don't have the education, but I don't have the network, but I don't have the tools, but, but, but. And so we have all of these buts that are getting in the way. Zacchaeus did not let his shortcomings keep him from his shift. Hmm. Zacchaeus did not allow who he was not to define who he could become. He leveraged his shortcomings. Sometimes, just sometimes, your lack unlocks your creativity. Woo. Sometimes, who you are not unlocks who you can become. I submit to you that if you're going to get to your next level, you cannot afford to let the shifts get in the, uh, get the, let the short get in the way of the shift. You have to let the butts do what the butts do, and you do what you do. Number three, he leveraged his shortcomings. Hmm. Here's number four. I want you to hear this. Uh, the Bible says in verse four that so, so, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. He, he ran ahead. I want you to hear this. He got away from the crowd. Sometimes separation is needed for elevation. Let me say that again. Sometimes separation is needed for elevation. And many of you are not on the level that you're on because of the people you're around. Oof. I'm going to let that sink in. Sometimes you are not on the level that you are supposed to be on because you are holding on and harboring relationships that are keeping you from flying. There's so many people uh, who are around us who don't have the faith that we have, didn't hear the word that God gave us, yet we're relying on them to inform our faith. That's a problem. The Bible says that Zacchaeus ran before the crowd. Again, sometimes separation is needed for elevation. Sometimes you have to position yourself for the move of God by getting away from the people you're around. Doesn't make them bad people. Doesn't mean that you love them any less. Doesn't mean that they don't add value to your life. But there are times in life when you have to get away from the crowd so that you can get with God. That's number four. He got away from the crowd. Hmm. Here's the last one. This is the most important one. I want you to hear this. The Bible says that he climbed a sycamore fig tree to see Jesus. Whew. I want you to hear that. He climbed a sycamore fig tree to see Jesus. Now, this doesn't seem like too weighty of a response. I mean, he climbed a tree so that he can see Jesus and so that Jesus can see him. But, but what's really important here is that he didn't climb just any tree. Zacchaeus, there were several trees he could have climbed, but he chose to climb the sycamore tree. Hmm. Dave, well, why is the sycamore tree so important? Let me, let me unpack it for you. Back in these days, in biblical times, sycamore trees were usually located at four-way intersections. So whether we're coming north, south, east, or west, the tree was centrally located. Now, why is this important? Because as Jesus is coming by, listen, Zacchaeus could not predict the shift and move. We can't tell Jesus what he's going to do. We can't tell Jesus where he should go. We can't tell Jesus how he should move. But what we can do is position ourselves so that no matter where Jesus turns, no matter what direction he goes in, I am in position to see him and move. It's important. Every one of us, if we're going to pivot, we have got to find a sycamore tree. Now, I don't mean an actual sycamore tree, but what I'm saying is that you and I must position ourselves. We must always be ready always be available to move according to God's move, which means we don't determine when he's going to move. We determine when we're going to move based on his move. 
Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree. He positioned himself, number five, to pivot. Ladies and gentlemen, what I submit to you is that you and I, if we were to look at this thing on a very practical level, we can't be married to anything that gives us a deeper connection than God's yes in our life or God's no in our life. Let me put it another way. I, I, you and I cannot afford to be so locked in anything that if God tells us to move and shift, we don't move. All right. You, you have. I have got to find a sycamore tree to climb into so that we don't miss the ship. The sycamore tree. Remember, the definition of pivot is the central point pin or shaft on which a mechanism turns. For Zacchaeus, it was the sycamore tree. He was able to pivot based on the tree. The question I have for you as I close here is what are you going to pivot on? When will you pivot? How will you pivot? Is God requiring you to leave a certain person, place or thing now? Is he requiring a pivot in your life? Do you feel an urge or a nudge in you to do something different? If I were you, I would lean in. I would get some clarity and I would shift according to God's will and plan. Because the thing you do not want to do is miss a move of God based on your own complacency and familiarity. All right. Let me give you those five things again. Zacchaeus was number one. Zacchaeus was not complacent. We cannot be complacent if we're going to move according to God's will. Number two, uh, he was seeking Jesus. He wasn't seeking his own will. Number three, he leveraged his shortcomings. He was short in stature, but he wasn't short in wisdom. Number four, he got away from the crowd. He got away from the crowd. Number five, he positioned himself to pivot. He positioned himself to pivot. I want you to really lean into this this week, even meditate this. Go back, look at Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 9. And I want you to let it minister to you. And I want you to really ask yourself and give yourself permission to ask and answer, is God calling me to pivot? Are there things God is calling me to that I need to shift and adjust? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time to share with your people. I pray, God, for an increase, uh, increase of courage and increase of faith in order that we might pivot according to your will. God, we bless you and honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask you a quick question. Uh, if you're watching this and you say to me, Dave, I don't know if Christ came back right now. I don't know if I go to heaven or if I died right now. I'm not sure if I go to heaven. Uh, I, I want to offer Christ to you. The, the, uh, listen, this is a part of the pivot. This is, in fact, the most pivotal part of the pivot, accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. If you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior and you want to do so today, I just want you to repeat after me. Simple little prayer. Um, in fact, God said it this way. If you would believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus died and was raised from the dead, you'll be saved. As simple as that. You don't have to do backflips. You don't have to roll around on the ground. You don't have to foam with the mouth. You don't have to have anybody push you down, lay hands on you, none of that stuff. You just confess a simple prayer. Let's pray it. Father, I'm a sinner. You died for my sins. I confess my sins to you today. And Father, I thank you for being the Savior of my life. Thank you for your sacrifice. Repeat after me and say, Father, live in me and I'll live for you. Love me. I'll do my best to love you. Be with me, God. I'll do my best to be with you. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for salvation today in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, we celebrate you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. What I invite you to do is I want you to find a church um, that you can get connected to, grow in, be developed in. This church uh, is the great is a great place to start. Pastor Alex Brown is one of the most integral men that I know. Uh, and he loves God's word. He loves God's people. And so I want you to connect with him. Uh, and let's let's grow together. Let's build together. Uh, let's go to another level. I want to share this with you also. If you are interested in growing in your understanding of godly relationships, uh, I am a, I call myself a marriage prep coach. If you are interested in being married or are currently married, and you need wisdom around relationships. You're tired of getting this thing wrong. 
you want to realign your life, I want to invite you to come join my coaching community. It's called the Activate Nation, uh, where we have monthly courses. Uh, I'm sorry, it, monthly courses, monthly webinars. We have weekly empowerment classes every Monday night, 5 p.m. Pacific, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. I teach a live virtual class centered around purpose and purposeful relationships. Uh, we have a private Facebook community that you'll get plugged into and people are waiting to do life with you. Uh, we have monthly meetups. We have uh, we have global meetups. Um, there's so much, you, you will have access to a vault of our past teachings and trainings. And so it's, it's just an amazing opportunity to grow. And again, if you need some, some strength around the area of relationships, even if you're single and you wanna position yourself to do relationships right and to get this marriage thing right, I want to invite you to come hang out with us at the Activate Nation. I want to be your coach. I do. Uh, I want to be your coach. Um, it's only $77 a month. It's the best $77 you will invest. Uh, I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. All right. So there's a link uh, right here on the screen. Um, that website, www.theactivatenation.com is where you can connect with us and go to another level. Um, by the way, if you do decide to get plugged in, uh, I want you to find me and inbox me, and I, I just want to connect with you and find out how I can personally support you as you grow uh, in your faith. In fact, you can inbox me directly at info at theactivatenation.com. Info at theactivatenation.com. All right. Again, thank you, Alex, for having me, man. Thank you, Team Brown. Thank you to this amazing ministry. Um, I just love y'all, and I'm excited about the growth and the shifts that will take place as you pivot toward God, towards God's will for your life. Have a brilliant rest of your day. Have a powerful week. Uh, and let's go to another level. All right, here we grow again. Take care. Thank you all so much for tuning in today and I pray that the message that you just heard um, was encouraging and that you did get something from it today. Um, that is definitely our prayer. Um, I wanted to go ahead and um, open this space um, and make room for something that is super super important um, and that is if any decisions have been made today um, maybe you have never said yes to Jesus maybe you up until this point have not been a believer but today something that you heard in this message um, drew you in and you want to know more and you are saying yes if you're committing your life to Christ and you want to make that um, that dedication that declaration if that is you um, we want you to text connect there will be a number at the bottom of the screen um, or maybe you have said yes before but you've turned away, you've kind of been doing things your own way, um, but today you feel ready to come back. Please know that there is nothing that could have taken you so far that you can't come back. Um, so if you're recommitting today, text connect to that number you'll see at the bottom of the screen. Or maybe you're looking for a church home and you have been watching a while or maybe today is your first time here but you are looking for a church home let us be your people let us be your tribe let us do life with you text connect to the number you see at the bottom of the screen and y'all i am expecting i just I, I, I feel it in my spirit. Decisions are being made today. So life family, let's go ahead and celebrate everybody in the chat. Let's light the chat up, y'all. Celebrate these decisions 
because these are the, some of the best decisions y'all that you will ever make is saying yes or recommitting and saying yes again you aren't there's no way you could be too far gone there's nothing that you can't come back from so we want to celebrate you so we're celebrating you guys we're praying with you in the chat we want to connect with you so again text connect to the number that you see at the bottom of the screen we're so glad and we are so thankful for the decisions that are being made today um, and also, we want to make room. Um, if this is your first time here, you may not know. If you are a partner of life, then you know we are a generous church. We like to give. We love to give. Let me not even say like. We love to give. Whether it's in-house, whether it's outside of the house, we love to make an impact. And we couldn't do that without you guys being so generous. So you will see below at the bottom of the screen ways that you are able to give. So if you feel led to give today, there will be several options below, several ways for you to be able to give um, however you feel led. Know that we thank you, the community thanks you, um, local schools thank you, um, local, we're just able to bless the community that is around us because of your giving. So just know that we thank you and we appreciate you. And guys, I'm so glad that you joined us today. Again, I pray that this message has encouraged you, has really blessed you, um, and that you don't just hear the message today, but that you go and apply it. You find a way to apply it in your life. We love you here at Life. We are thankful that you are here, and we will see you next time.